Okay, another type of uh, limited dependent variable is the corner solution response variable where we have non-trivial numbers of zeros in our data. An example could be the amount of individual spending on alcohol in a given month. Many people will be spending a continuous amount of uh, money on alcohol consumption. On the other hand, we'll see a lot of people spending a zero amount. So we'll see a lot of zeros in the data. And uh, if we have too many zeros in our data, what we can do is instead of uh, regressing the linear probability model, we can uh, estimate a Tobit model. And slope coefficients that we will get from a Tobit model, again, cannot be compared with the slope coefficients that we will get from uh, a linear regression model. For that, we have to, again, calculate uh, average partial effects. And those average partial effects will enable us to compare the results. Okay, so let's look at an example of uh, a Tobit model in R. Here we are using MROSE data set. So this data set MROSE contains data of 753 women and our dependent variable is the number of hours that a woman worked. Let's look at the summary statistics of uh, this variable hours. This uh, variable varies from uh, 0 to about 5000. So let's uh, look at the table and this table shows us that uh, for 325 observations the value is 0. So out of uh, 753 women, 325, they reported working zero hours in 1975, which is a non-trivial number of uh, zeros in this case. So this type of observation is called censored from the left because we are censoring this observation on uh, this end of the data rather than on uh, this end of the data. In that case, it will be called censored from uh, the right. I'm going to start with regressing this model using uh, OLS and then I'm going to regress this model using a senseReg function from a senseReg library. So we can see that uh, the women who have a higher income are older or have a kid less than six years old at home have fewer working hours in 1975. And the women who are more educated have more experience. They provided more working hours in 1975. 75. So a couple of observations here. First, the coefficient sign across uh, OLS and uh, Tobit model are identical. Right? So whenever there's a negative coefficient value in the OLS, it will show a negative coefficient value in the Tobit model as well. So our first direction attribute is identical across OLS and uh, Tobit model. Second, the statistical significance is almost similar except for a couple of variables. For example, this variable is statistically significant in the Tobit model but insignificant in the OLS model. But the uh, rest of the models are showing the same uh, level of significance. And when they are insignificant, both models are saying that those are statistically insignificant. Again, as I said previously, it will be tempting to compare these uh, coefficient values to talk about the magnitude across OLS and uh, the Tobit model. But we cannot compare the magnitude across OLS and Tobit model. To do that, we need to look at uh, the average marginal effects. And so let's go ahead and uh, calculate uh, marginal effects uh, and pass this uh, saved Tobit regression equation in this marginal effect function and get the average partial effects. So now we can compare these coefficient values with the, the OLS coefficient values. We can talk about the estimated effects uh, using these marginal effects. For example, we can say that each additional year of education increases number of hours that a woman supply in the labor force by about 48.7 hours. So this is how you regress Tobit model in R. So remember, you cannot compare the regression results from a simple Tobit model with the OLS. You can get the statistical significance and the direction of the relationship. But to talk about the magnitude of the relationship, you have to calculate the marginal effects from the Tobit model. All right, I'll see you in the next video to talk about 
the Poisson model. 